I am starting off by going ahead and feeding my sourdough starter for the day. I'm trying to get some measurements for the blog, so I actually created a new sourdough starter using whole wheat flour and I'm just trying to mark down measurements and nail down a more tried and true recipe for the blog. So that's what I'm working on here and I just am feeding it and weighing out the exact flour and water measurements. Since I have started using sourdough starter again, I have been going through the flour much quicker and recently my sister-in-law actually picked up some of these canisters for me at a thrift store and they're the perfect size. They're half gallon so they're not too big and they're not too small but they work perfectly for small amounts of flour to keep on the counter. So I actually swap out the big canister that normally sits in my pantry because since I use my sourdough starter every day and I have to feed it, I had previously had that setting on the counter and it's just really, really big because it's a gallon and a half and it's honestly too big. It takes up way too much countertop space. So I swapped it out for this half gallon canister and it just works so much better. So in one I have organic all purpose flour and then in the other I have organic whole wheat flour. Ben's dad recently gave me this cast iron Dutch oven to use. So today I'm going to be working on cleaning that up. As you can tell, it needs to be thoroughly cleaned and it needs to be reseasoned. I have a white Dutch oven, but it actually busted the handle that did the other day. So I'm going to only be using it for photography for the blog now, just for pictures and stuff. But I was cleaning it in the kitchen sink here and it barely slipped, like barely even touched the sink at all and the enamel chipped off so I knew that it wasn't going to hold up. It's just a cheap one off of Amazon and it does it a decent job but it's not my favorite so since it's just pretty I'll use it for pictures. But I wanted one that I didn't have to worry about busting the enamel on or anything like that so I got this one from him and this is going to be our new Dutch oven that we do use for all of our soups, stews, if we want to bake bread, just whatever we will be using this one now. The first thing I did was use a Brillo pad. Normally I would use the ones that do not have the soap already in them. Usually you can get them at the hardware store or whatever, but it's just steel wool. But I actually did not have any of those on hand and I didn't want to run into town. So I just used this one and it does have soap in it, but since I'm going to be seasoning it, I didn't really care. But it worked really well to get the rust off. So just completely scrub and scrub. It does take a lot of elbow grease to get all the rust off, but once you see no more rust, then thoroughly dry your cast iron with a rag, but make sure it's a rag you don't care about because the black will come off on the rag and it will stain the rag. So I always use old tea towels on them that I don't really care about. They're just super cheap from Walmart and that's what I use for all of my cast iron. But as you can see, the water was black coming out and it's just because it is taking all of that off. This is the same method that I use for restoring all of my cast iron pans because usually I just buy them cheap at thrift stores or whatever. But here's the information for this cast iron Dutch oven if you want to look one up. Usually you can find them on eBay, thrift stores, or antique stores. My favorite brands are the Griswold or Wagner just because they have a smooth surface inside already and they are much lighter. This Dutch oven is bigger than my white Dutch oven but it is so much lighter in weight than the white one. So I'm excited about that because the white one was so heavy. But what I'm gonna do is take coconut oil because it has a higher smoke point and I'm gonna rub this all over the skillet and on the sides. But once you get it all melted, then I'm gonna take paper towels and wipe out any excess oil. You just want a very light coating in there. And whenever I stick it in the oven, I'm actually going to turn it upside down and bake it at 350 degrees for at least an hour. And before I bake it, I'm going to put an old cookie sheet underneath of this pot here because it is going to drain as it bakes. And you want that to happen because if you bake it upright, then all that excess oil is just going to bake in the bottom of this, like the pan here but it's going to pull and it's going to create these really sticky residue in there and it's almost impossible to get out. You have to end up scraping it out and it's a hassle. So I recommend turning it upside down that way the excess drips off 
and use an old cookie pan if you have one. I use this one to catch all of my runoff no matter what I'm doing in my oven so that it doesn't get to the bottom of the oven or cause a fire or anything like that. So this one is just like an old cookie pan that I have just to catch the runoff of whatever I'm using. While that starts to season in the oven, I thought I would introduce you to our newest member of the farm. This is Dolly and she is a Jersey milk cow. She is a heifer, so she is not bred yet, and we hope to soon breed her, but my brother bought her from the stockyard whenever she was really young and raised her, so they were needing to get rid of her, and it just aligned perfectly. We've been looking for a milk cow for years, but haven't been able to find one that we wanted or just one that we loved. So since she is young, we can still teach her and stuff. She thinks she's a large dog right now and she loves to play. So we're trying to break her of the head butting and stuff like that just because she doesn't know her own strength yet. But slowly but surely we will get her there and it'll be over a year before we ever get milk from her. So we have plenty of time to work with her. And before we ever get milk from her, we will get her tested just to make sure she is healthy and that it is safe to consume her milk. I had been needing to do this for so long but kept putting it off but I finally went in our addition where we keep all of our extra living stuff from our old house so all of our like furniture, pots, pans, everything like that is still in that addition and it just went straight from storage to in there and whenever we renovated the kitchen I could not find my pots and pans from the old house so I ended up buying a set from Walmart. but. That set is not holding up like I'd hoped and it's causing a lot of issues. So it's actually like flaking off on our food and stuff like that. So I ended up having to go spend a few hours in the addition digging through boxes and found all of my, it's called like cook, like vision, like corning wear or something like that. But there are a lot of mixed pieces. So some of it's Pyrex, there's Anchor, Fire King, and then the corning vision wear or something like that. So. I have so much of it. I didn't even realize that I had so much because I previously wanted a set from my mammal, but she wasn't ready to get rid of hers. So I ended up buying my own set off of eBay. And then it was like a year or two later, she was moving and she asked me if I wanted her set. So I have two full sets now and then some extra pieces I've just picked up along the way. So. We're gonna try and keep it minimal and I'm only pulling out a few of the pots that I know I need because since we have all the cast iron skillets, I don't ever use the skillets that were with my original Walmart set. So I'm not even gonna worry about pulling out the Vision or Corningware, whatever you wanna call it, set. I'm not gonna worry about pulling out those skillets just because I know I won't use them. So I only need the pots. Now jumping back to the Dutch oven, it's been in the oven for about an hour and a half so it's ready to come out and I didn't have enough room to put the lid and the Dutch oven at the same time so I'm going to pull out the Dutch oven and put the oil onto the lid and then put the lid inside of the oven and do the same process for it. But what I'm actually going to do is add additional oil into the Dutch oven and leave it on the burner and periodically I'm gonna go and turn it on for a few minutes on high heat and then once it starts to smoke then I'm gonna turn the oven the burner back off and I'm gonna repeat this process several times probably about four or five times and what this is doing is just allowing the cast iron Dutch oven to reheat on the bottom and it opens up the pores you could call it and allows the oil to continue to soak in so I do this periodically throughout the day like I said probably about four or five times and then at the very end I do wipe out the extra oil after I've done the process about four or five times. In the left drawer of our stove is where I keep all of my pots and pans currently besides my cast iron that is in my kitchen island but this is actually not a warmer a lot of people think it's a warmer and it's not it doesn't even get warm at all so I just store my pots and pans in there and I'm actually gonna be swapping out all of this it's called the beautiful line it's from Walmart by the Drew Barrymore and I loved the look of this set and that's why I originally bought it but as you can tell from these clips all of the coating is starting to rub off and I noticed it a couple weeks ago but then I thought I was just seeing stuff 
and I actually made mashed potatoes and I saw it in the mashed potatoes so I was like absolutely not I'm not doing it anymore so that's why I made the point to dig out all of my old pots and pans and their glass so I know I don't have to worry about that and it won't be a concern anymore I can just put it in the back of my mind me and Ben always joke and say that the old way is the best way and we say that we just don't fit in this generation because we like to do things the old way and we love the old vintage items and the antiques that we can have around the house but we only have them if we can use them and that's like this pot and pan set I should have just dug it out from the beginning instead of wasting the money on a new modern set and because now it's just I feel like I've wasted that money but oh well I lived and I learned and now I can just go back to my old original set and be done with it and I'm only pulling out a few of the items like I said but I am gonna hang on to them for a little bit longer especially to get us through these holidays and that'll really tell me what kind of bigger pots I need or anything like that because I do have several big pots but I only put one of each size in here and I'm hoping that's enough but if it's not then I can always go in the addition and just bring it out and wash it as I need it and put it into this drawer because I don't like to have a bunch of extra stuff on hand especially in my kitchen but I don't want to get rid of it either especially not yet because if I do need it I know it's there but it will be a good set to add into our summer kitchen whenever we get that built it'll be several years so honestly I'll probably just box it back up and it'll stay in the addition until we get our summer kitchen completed from this set I did end up pulling out a few extra things that I had I had one casserole dish that I went ahead and pulled out because I actually did not have any casserole dishes in the kitchen at all I don't have any other ones so I pulled that out and then I actually found my mixing bowl set that matches this so as you can see I kept this drawer very very simple I only have four pots and pans and then I have the four lids that go with them so we will see if I need to pull out any of the other pots and pans in there if so then I'll just add it to this drawer but there's the white Dutch oven I've been talking about and then there is the mixing bowl set that matches the cookware set since I was already working on the Dutch oven and needed to spend a little bit of time in the kitchen today and then I swapped out the pots and pans I figured I would go ahead and wash the curtain underneath the sink and vacuum the floors as well as mop so that is what I ended up doing and just to give myself a fresh start in here in the kitchen I love having a clean kitchen there is nothing better than a clean kitchen in my opinion I always get questions especially over on Instagram of people asking if all of this is just for the aesthetic of like the videos or of the house or if we even use all of the vintage stuff in our house and we actually do I don't know if anybody else is like this but we truly have found that usually the antique and vintage items they're still around for a reason they were built to last unlike the new throwaway things that cookware set that I was talking about the white one that I bought from Walmart I have not had that for I think it's been like maybe eight months and it's already completely coming apart like the Teflon or it's not Teflon it's something else the non-stick coating it is already all coming off and especially if you can see it in your food that is not good at all so that's the purpose of why we always try and get the cast iron and yeah you pay a little bit more up front for it but I spent like $150 on that cookware set and it didn't even last me eight months so I truly feel like I wasted my money on that and I will not be buying it ever again so I will continue to stick with just the glass cookware or the stainless steel cookware and the cast iron it just truly is built to last and we do use it as you can see if you watch my videos but it's not just for the aesthetic yeah it's nice to look at and they're nice to have and I do enjoy them but we do actually use them as well and the same can be said about our kitchen sink and our stove if you know the history of our kitchen sink we actually dug it out of the creek it was Ben's great-grandparents sink and it has survived for over 50 years in a creek and yeah the enamel is a little beat up on it but if it's lasted 50 years in a creek getting constant water rain over it and just in the dirt and mud then surely it will hold up in our house and if we notice that it's starting to get worse then we'll always just have it re-enameled 
but as of now it's not a problem and that's our look on everything like this stove it's from 1956 and yeah it may have a little bit of damage to the enamel but it has lasted over 70 years it's doing just fine so don't get me wrong we do love the aesthetic of the older items and we think they fit perfectly with our farmhouse but we do actually use all the older items in our house. Yeah, there may be some vintage dishes or I have a few family heirloom pieces of plates that I don't use and those will be hung in our dining room. But other than that, we use just about everything. Here is a reminder of what the Dutch oven looked like in the beginning. It was completely rusted and it just needed a good overall cleaning. So after good cleaning and some oil, some time in the oven and seasoning it on the burner it is now ready to go but that is going to be it for this video so thank you guys for watching and i hope you guys will like and subscribe